Good afternoon, everybody. It is great to be with you again today. Welcome to The Simple Plan Live. Very excited to be here. I'm Brad Macbeth, your host. And today we're going to look at some interesting stuff. Uh, we see questions about it all the time. Uh, it's kind of a topic people think about a lot, but they're not really sure what to think about it. We're going to take a look at how much disability insurance you should be carrying. Uh, it's an important part of most people's financial plan and protection and security plan. And so it's an important thing to have that all geared up for the way that you live your life to ensure that your family's protected. Uh, the best plans we put together can always be thwarted by the things that go bump in life. And of course, this being 2020, we are all very well aware of the many, many things uh, that can go bump in life, including the ones you really had no idea could happen. So uh, just want to remind you, you can always find us on Facebook at Macbeth Group. Uh, you can also find us on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, Twitter, we're at Cash Coach Canada. Instagram, we are at Macbeth Group. And I uh, want to thank our sponsor for the day. That is the simpleplan.com life insurance. You can get your custom personal quotes for term life insurance at getthesimpleplan.com forward slash quotes. Uh, you can also figure out how much life insurance you might need if you don't know that at getthesimpleplan.com forward slash how much. As you've heard me say repeatedly, uh, this is an optimum time to be getting term life insurance or reviewing your coverage because it looks like rates are going to start going up here fairly quickly. Um, they've been going up in some of the permanent insurance products. I expect we'll start to see them go up in the term life insurance front simply because uh, interest rates are so low and plant, it looks like they're going to stay low for a fair amount of time. And that has an effect on insurance rates. Um, also, um, you can get a lot of coverage right now with ha without having to go through some of the intrusive stuff that we've had to go through in the past. You don't need, you can get up to $2 million worth of coverage without anybody coming to your house or taking a blood sample or a urine sample, that kind of thing. Uh, so a lot of people prefer life that way. So uh, those are temporary measures because of the difficulty in getting someone to come to your house, a paramedical nurse. So that's the way it is right now. Uh, may not necessarily stay that way permanently. Um, we do have a helpful tool for you today. It's the Simple Plan Disability Insurance Need Calculator. Uh, we're going to go through that tool. That's our main purpose today. You're going to see how that works. Uh, you can find that for yourself at bit.ly forward slash spdicalc. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash spdicalc. And that is all lowercase. So again, thanks very much. Really happy to have you here with us. Uh, looking forward to a little bit of interesting and educational time today. So let's get right to it. Um, we're going to take a look at this disability insurance need calculator. Uh, just gave you the link to that so you can go and do that for yourself once you've learned how to use it here. It's fairly straightforward but want to kind of help you understand a bit of the ins and outs. Uh, interestingly, uh, you could use this, I think, uh, quite well to calculate how much money you should have in your emergency fund as well. Uh, simply because your emergency fund and disability insurance are, you know, you want to try to cover the basics. Um, we're not, I mean, if, if you're really well set out, then by all means, get yourself the Cadillac of disability insurance coverage. Uh, but disability insurance, uh, I can tell you it's a fair bit of hoops to jump through to get it. And it's, it's not an inexpensive product. Uh, and the reason for that is we are far more likely to be off work for a period of time, an extended period of time, than we are to die prematurely. Uh, generally speaking, people do not die prematurely. But also, generally speaking, many, many people, a significant number, uh, 40, 50 percent, will spend time off work um, without an income for an extended period of time. So uh, 
We're going to go into all the bells and whistles and ins and outs of disability insurance coverage in another episode because it's a fairly complex product or there's just there's a lot of options available. Um, but what we want to look at today is what's the amount of coverage that you might want to have. And so looking at our calculator here, uh, we're going to calculate the monthly amount because that's usually how we think about these things. And uh, we're going to um, look at first how much you would have available if you were disabled. Uh, that is considered disability, meaning you're unable to work at earning your regular income. Um, so you just start there by putting your name in. I'll put mine in. And uh, I'm just making up numbers here. These aren't real numbers, but uh, we're going to put in how much is your partner's income um, because obviously that's a source. Do you have government sources of income uh, for many kid or many people with uh, children, uh, dependent children? They may have some government source of income. Maybe you get a GST rebate. Maybe you get other things. Who knows? So if you've got something, you're going to put that in there. By the way, if you uh, on any of these green uh, any of these fields, you put your cursor over the green question mark, uh, point to the green question mark, and you're going to get a helpful tip uh, to understand what that little field is all about. All right, so existing disability insurance coverage, do you have any of that? You might put that in there. Um, investments. All right, now let's think about this for a minute. When we look at investments here, we're, we do not want to be taking into account the money that we have set aside for retirement. Because if we start consuming that because we're disabled, uh, that's going to just kick the can down the road. We're going to have a problem when in, uh, retirement time comes. So we don't want to include investments that are earmarked for retirement. So we don't want to include RRSPs or anything that we're saving for retirement. But if you have other investments, that you could uh, get some cash flow from. You don't necessarily have to be able to have to liquidate it, but if you could get some cash flow from it, then uh, by all means include how much monthly, and again, because we're calculating monthly, you wanna put in here how much income or how much you could take monthly to apply to your particular circumstances. Uh, emergency savings, uh, honestly, I would not include that, and here's why. Um, you, want, you want to think about disability as kind of two periods. The first period is the period where you're going to self-insure. So, you know, maybe it's 30 days, maybe it's 60 days, maybe it's 90 days. I believe EI covers 120 days, if I'm not mistaken, of um, disability payments. Now, EI probably only pays 50%, um, so that may not be enough for you, but EI covers 50% for those who are eligible for it. Uh, so you want to think about, um, that's called a disqualification period, or um, you, you want to be self-insuring for a period of time because if you buy disability insurance, but it doesn't kick in until you've been disabled for six months, for example, that's much less expensive than buying disability insurance that kicks in if you've only been disabled for 30 days. So if you can cover up that period, that 60, 90, 120 days, maybe it's six months, maybe it's a whole year, you're going to really lower the cost of your disability insurance. So that's where your emergency savings would go. So we don't want to be looking at emergency savings as a source to subsidize our disability income from an insurance standpoint. RSP withdrawals, we absolutely want to avoid those, so please don't uh, include those. Obviously, if you have some kind of emergency, you may get driven to that position, but that is a very difficult position to get put in. Uh, and maybe you have some other sources of income, maybe you have a rental property, who knows. Whatever you've got, uh, put it here in these uh, other, other fields. And that's going to give you your total monthly income sources in our fictional case here with my name on it. Um, we're showing $2,000 in monthly income sources. Now, here's where this could be really quite helpful from your emergency fund point of view. Um, so we're going to set our province, and uh, the reason is because um, we're going to get some suggestions here, uh, and those suggestions, you'll see 
there's certain numbers there in the average expenses column. If I change provinces, you'll see that number change. Um, so it's giving you helpful suggestions about what the average expenses are that people are spending in each province in these categories. And so these are really your emergency fund types of categories here. Uh, they're the things that you really have to pay for to some extent based on your particular circumstances. Uh, and some of these vary quite widely depending on your lifestyle. So again, let's look at Ontario. Um, so housing in Ontario, it's simply just a helpful indicator uh, how the average housing expense is 2357 Now, what do we mean by housing? What are we counting there? There's my question. Here's my answer. Let's go point over at the green question mark beside the housing field. And so housing is to include all housing costs, such as mortgage rent, uh, mortgage or rent, uh, your utility costs, your property taxes, um, repairs and furnishings. That's what's included in this 2357 number. Um, for an emergency fund, you're going to be pretty skinny on the repairs end of thing, and you're probably not going to include any furnishings because if we're having a financial emergency, well, let's not go out and start buying new furniture. Um, but repairs, you know, that depends, right? If you're just wanting to kind of fix up the back deck a little, well, maybe that can be deferred. On the other hand, if your roof is leaking, you probably need to take care of that. So um, we'll put a number in here. Let's call it 2200 per month. Uh, and now transportation. Uh, of course, that varies widely. Again, we're going to here include our all vehicle, uh, fuel financing, insurance repairs, and commuting costs. Depends on your lifestyle. Uh, you know, there's lots of people in some of the really big metropolitan areas. They don't have a car or they don't need to operate it in case of an emergency. They live in the central core. They can take um, transit. You know, they rely on subway, trains, what have you. Um, so whatever your number is there that's going to get you around, uh, include that there. Uh, food. Um, Again, uh, what we want to be putting in here is we don't want to be insuring uh, or paying for coverage that's going to give us the fanciest lifestyle we've always hoped for. We or even the, the lifestyle we're currently enjoying. We might say, listen, if I'm on a disability, I don't want to be paying for coverage that's going to keep me in uh, steak. You know, it'll be okay if I'm just doing getting by with, with hamburger. So, um, Put in here what your bare minimum uh, requirement is for food. Uh, insurance and pensions. Um, now again, uh, some insurance coverage you're going to have to keep paying, so you want to make sure you've got that included in there. Um, retirement planning and pensions. You might want to um, plan to put those types of monthly things on hold. Now, of course, there's a big difference between being disabled for six months or a year and being permanently disabled. Uh, so you need to kind of put in there a number for your retirement that is essential to your particular circumstances. Uh, recreation, um, again, that would be a number you'd probably want to get kind of minimal on. Uh, healthcare, we're going to include amounts spent on health care and personal care here. Um, that would include premiums for health care coverage that you may have. And we've got clothing, uh, gifts and charity. Um, so again, you're going to want to put in there what your kind of minimum requirement is, given your particular circumstances. Uh, miscellaneous, uh, education. And so now we get our subtotal. And so here we, well, I haven't put anything in, so let's run down through some of these. So transportation, um, we'll say we can probably figure our way through it on 500 a month. Food, we'll go 600. Um, obviously, you know, that's maybe for a couple of people, depending where you're living. Um, it's a little more expensive to buy food where I live. Oop, probably a little less expensive if you live in uh, urban Toronto or Vancouver area. Um, 
even more expensive if you have teenagers to feed and that kind of thing. So again, just making up some numbers here. Um, we'll keep this. We'll keep this one skinny. Uh, healthcare. Whoops, three hundred a month. Clothing. Um, you know, on an emergency fund basis, I'd say, listen, if I'm digging into my emergency fund, I can get by without buying new clothing. Uh, on the other hand, or or shopping at Goodwill or what have you. Um, on the other hand, uh, if I'm permanently disabled, I'm going to need clothing over my lifetime, and so we're probably going to put something in there. Uh, gifts and charity, um, do with that as you will. Um, for some of us, uh, giving is not really optional, um, but uh, for others, you know, they're going to make some choices around that. So miscellaneous. <clears throat> Education will leave at zero, so we're up to four thousand five fifty a month here. Um, and perhaps you've got some other expenses. Again, you're going to uh, include those in here as well. So where does that put us? Well, it puts us at what's our income need? Well, if Brad is disabled in this scenario, we've got a monthly income source from his partner of two thousand dollars a month and monthly expenses of four thousand five fifty a month. And so I would need to get myself $2,550 a month in disability insurance coverage. Uh, now, disability insurance, interestingly, is tied to, uh, usually tied to, what you are, uh, how much you're earning. And it's usually a percentage, a maximum percentage of that. Sometimes it's 60, sometimes it's 66. You might be able to, in some situations, get up to 80% of your income, uh, but generally two-thirds is kind of the cap, and so also a rule of thumb. You know, you can look at, well, what's my income? Uh, my income is 5000 a month, so I'm going to need two-thirds of that. Uh, let's call it 5100 a month because that makes it easy. So then I would need 3400 of disability coverage if it's just my income we're replacing. And so... Um, you know, you want to apply that rule of thumb and go, well, you know, I'm probably going to need 60 to 65, 67% of my income. And when you do it this way, this is what we would call bottom up. That other approach is top down. You take what you're already spending and you just make up a number from that. So this is bottom up. It gets you to a more accurate number and potentially a more livable number because, um, there's going to be a very big difference between buying disability insurance coverage that covers you for $2,500 a month versus $3,500 a month. You're going to pay significantly more in premiums, well, probably about 50% more or close to it, uh, maybe 40 So um, you want to be realistic in that you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're going to be living with great financial difficulty if you are disabled. Uh, on the other hand, you don't want to be uh, paying, again, unless your means support it, uh, you don't want to be paying so much that uh, you're, not, you're not taking care of other things or living your life well because your disability insurance premiums are pretty high. Now, most people, most people who have disability insurance uh, have it through their workplace. Um, and that's fine, it's a good place to have it, but of course what happens is if you change workplaces, uh, you lose your coverage in the one location and perhaps they have disability insurance coverage in your new job, uh, or perhaps they don't. And if they don't, then uh, you may well end up without disability coverage. Um, but you can certainly get personal individual disability coverage, highly recommended for anyone who is self-employed um, because uh, if you are unable to work, you're not going to receive anything, and that could be quite problematic. So this calculator gives you a sense of how much you're going to need for your disability insurance coverage. As I said, you can also use it nicely to calculate how much you might need on a monthly basis for an emergency fund. And so for your emergency fund, if you used it this way, uh, you'd make a few adjustments. Uh, you're not going to be worried about long-term investing in your emergency fund. But uh, what you do is you just take your dis what 
the calculation you got here, and then just multiply it by the number of months that you're going to need coverage or emergency fund access for. So, um, you know, minimum on that would be three or four months would be my recommendation. Um, five or six months is probably a more comfortable place to be. And so if, for example, you're in a workplace that has short-term disability coverage and your job is very stable. So for example, you might be a government employee um, or you're in some sector that's just booming and continuing to grow. And as we now know that, uh, that phrase, an essential service, who knew how much we were gonna know about that until 2020 came along. Um, you know, then you know, maybe you're gonna be fine with three months of coverage uh, from an emergency fund. On the other hand, uh, well, and also if you have uh, a spouse who works as well. On the other hand, if you are an employee, or sorry, if you are self-employed uh, and or you're in a, an industry where, you know, things are cyclical or sometimes tenuous, um, then you're probably going to want to have coverage for five or six months in your emergency fund. And uh, this kind of calculation is the same kind of calculation that is good to do to come up with that same kind of number. Um, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, it gives you a sense of how much uh, disability insurance coverage you should have. And you'll hear from, you know, all the financial uh, pundits out there, you know, whether it's your Dave Ramsey or uh, Susie Orman or Gail Baz Oxlade or anyone else, they're going to tell you that you should have disability insurance coverage. And the dirty little secret is that most people don't have it. And they don't have it, uh, well, primarily because uh, their workplace doesn't offer it and they don't know where to go looking for it. They don't even know where to begin. Uh, and unfortunately for disability insurance coverage, because it's a pretty complex product um, to kind of get the right fit for uh, the individual, there aren't really good calculators out there that uh, will help you um, figure out how much you're going to pay for that. So for example, we've got, and we'll throw it up there again in a bit, we've got our uh, quote tool for term insurance coverage, because that's a pretty straightforward and simple product to quote on. Disability insurance, not the same. You really are going to need to talk to an insurance advisor in order to uh, get some sense of what that might cost. And it, the pricing on it and the, the options available are very dependent on your the nature of your work and your income. Uh, so for example, people who are more likely to be unable to work are in physical work. They're, some are also more likely to be injured uh, in physical work. So for example, if you're a, uh, a hard rock miner, uh, you're gonna pay uh, more dis for disability coverage and gonna get fewer bells and whistles than someone who is, for example, an accountant who's working, uh, you know, they're going to be able to do their work even if they lose a limb, most likely. They're going to be able to, they're not going to get injured on the job, most likely. Um, and they're less likely to um, get some kind of illness that would prevent them from working in that industry. So um, it, it's really a very custom product designed around your particular individual needs. And so you really need to get an insurance advisor to help you with that. Um, now, one other thing, uh, because for some people they don't have, they may not have an income, right? Perhaps you're a stay-at-home parent and it's like, well, I don't have an income. How can I get disability coverage? Well, you may still be able to get disability coverage because there is some disability coverage available out there uh, based on loans. So for example, if you have a mortgage, you can get disability, and I'm talking about real disability insurance uh, based on the amount of your loan payments for your mortgage. Now, what do I mean by real? There's disability coverage that you can get uh, from your mortgage provider through the bank usually, uh, or through, worse yet, the credit card company. Um, you can get disability and life insurance and critical illness insurance coverage through those providers. Those, generally speaking, are terrible products. Uh, the number one reason being that they're underwritten at the time of claim. What that means is 
uh, and we'll do a whole show on this, but what that means is uh, you don't, uh, they only ask you a few minor qualifying questions up front. Uh, they really do their investigations on things if you actually go to make a claim. So what happens is you may have paid into this for many years and then you go make a claim and you find out that you're not covered because they say, well, you didn't answer this question correctly 10, 12 years ago when you got that coverage. So, um, and the statistics on this are, are pretty disturbing. The CBC's done some good expose documentary work on it a while back. I believe the numbers in Australia show that that type of insurance uh, claims are declined, you know, in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 percent of the time. Uh, whereas with standard underwritten life insurance, which this disability insurance coverage I'm talking about is, um, it, it almost always pays out uh, well over 99 percent of the time. So, uh, and so the times it doesn't pay out are basically times of, of fraud. And so um, you want to have that kind of disability coverage, not the mortgage insurance kind of disability coverage um, or the credit card disability insurance coverage. The other thing is, because uh, those will only make your credit card or your mortgage payments, but the other thing is they're really expensive forms of coverage. Uh, so yes, they're easy to get. You just tick the checkbox, say yes, answer a few questions, and it seems, oh, I'm covered. Uh, the real problem is you are not necessarily covered, which is pretty scary. So uh, we'll talk about that in greater detail another time. Uh, we'll do a whole show on mortgage insurance. But um, we're talking about fully underwritten, big application, disability insurance here. And uh, if you are interested in that kind of thing, you really do need to talk to an advisor uh, to help you with that. Happy, they'd be happy to help you find out uh, what the right kind of coverage is for you and how much you might pay for that coverage. Uh, and so you can contact us or, of course, you can uh, contact your friends at uh, the Simple Plan Life Insurance or the Simple Plan Insurance. That's at uh, getthesimpleplan.com forward slash quotes. You can get the life insurance quotes uh, or you can figure out how much life insurance you need at getthesimpleplan.com forward slash how much. Thank you to them, our sponsors today. Uh, you can contact The Simple Plan uh, through their website or contact us directly. And we're happy to point you in the right direction on disability insurance if that's what you're looking for. Um, so that tool that you saw us use today, you can go and use it for yourself. It's called the Simple Plan Disability Insurance Need Calculator. It's at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash S-P-D-I calc. That's bit.ly forward slash S-P-D-I calc. That's all lowercase. Again, you can find us always on Facebook at Macbeth Group. You can also find us on Twitter at Cash Coach Canada and on Instagram at Macbeth Group. I want to thank you uh, for spending time with us today. I appreciate your time and happy to help you. Uh, let us know the topics that are of interest to you or love to cover them on our show. We will be back on Tuesday next week. Have a great, warm, late summer weekend. Oh, and go Canucks. All right, thanks very much. Have a great day.